This is SysRev, the collaborative platform for document review and data extraction. A question we get a lot is, what does that mean? What's the point of reviewing documents and extracting data? Well, practically speaking, folks use SysRev for two main purposes. The first is a type of research called literature reviews, and the second is what we'll call data curation. Literature reviews can be thought of as summaries of research. They look at all the relevant publications and attempt to generalize findings and methods as well as identify gaps in research. The most rigorous of literature reviews is called a systematic review. Data curation is when data is extracted for the purpose of building a standardized data set, oftentimes for machine learning. We actually built CISREV version 0.1 to help curate data for our own predictive models. This video will give an overview of how CISREV is utilized for literature reviews and data curation. For a deeper dive into specific features, please check out our other videos. Our first example involves a systematic review conducted on COVID-19 and kidney transplants. This was conducted by an international team of researchers led by Dr. Maha Lingasivam. This systematic review serves as a good place to start because they utilize CISREV for three phases of their research, screening, extracting, and assessing. I should note that all of this research was conducted on CISREV for free. One of the first steps to any literature review is to screen documents. The purpose of the document screen is to evaluate potential publications for their validity and rigor. Put another way, to decide whether or not each publication is worthy of inclusion. As you can see, this research team had a number of qualifying and disqualifying criteria. Overall, they reviewed 476 documents and included 31. To aid in this process, the research team utilized labels. While they can serve a variety of functions, the research team here used labels to guide the reviewer's inclusion-exclusion decision. That is, the reviewers were only supposed to include articles that were from December 1, 2019 onwards, included a COVID-19 and a CKD diagnosis, had a relevant study design, and relevant outcomes. By having the logic decisions represented as labels, it helped the reviewers stay consistent throughout their research. In their second project, we can see the next stage in the review process, data extraction. Once again, the research team had a rigorous protocol to ensure consistency. As we scroll down, we can begin to see the other use of labels, extracting complex information. Our overarching goal with SysRev is to allow users to extract any type of information from any document and to build simple, versatile tools to achieve this. Labels are such a tool. These are the label definitions for the data extraction project, and there are three types. Boolean labels ask a simple true-false or yes-no question. Categorical labels allow users to choose from a number of pre-selected options and strings, which allow users to input any response. By combining Boolean, categorical, and string labels, our users are able to extract all types of information. For a better look, let's dive down into the 21 partially included documents and display the labels. Now you can begin to understand and appreciate the amount of data that's being extracted in these projects. The last piece of research I'll address is the risk of bias assessment. The researchers were able to translate the Robin's Eye assessment tool into a series of seven Boolean questions. As the assessment is consistent, the research team will be able to simply clone this project the next time they need to do a similar analysis. The next example involves a different type of literature review, one where the goal wasn't a publication, but simply to have a macro understanding of the subject matter, in this case, Mangiferin, which is found in mangoes. Specifically, our partner was interested in whether Mangiferin was worthy of further exploration as a potential ingredient. As absolute rigor was not required, we were able to use CISREV's AI to optimize our literature review. For every project, CISREV begins to build an inclusion predictor model once 25 articles have been reviewed. A visualization of that model's predictions can be found on the overview dashboard. 
The purpose of the model is to predict whether or not an article will be included. An article having a score of 1 means that SysRev is 100% sure that the article will be included. A score of 0 means that SysRev is 100% sure that the article will not be included. A score of 0 0.5 means that SysRev is perfectly unsure whether or not it will be included. For our enterprise partners, we also have models that predict for Boolean and categorical labels. If I deselect the unreviewed articles, we can see green bars and red bars. The green bars are the documents that were manually included, and the red bars are the documents that were manually excluded. As you can see, the model does pretty well, not perfectly. But once I only select the unreviewed documents, I can see that SysRev is pretty confident about the remaining articles. To go back to our example, at this point in the project, our founder, Dr. Luchtefeld, had reviewed 206 of the 725 articles. We then decided to let SysRev's AI finish the sorting. SysRev allows for articles to be sorted based on a number of different filters. In this particular case, we can filter based on the inclusion model. Add a filter, prediction. While we wanted to save time, we still wanted to be inclusive. So we included any article that SysRev thought had at least a 25% chance of being included. To that end, SysRev thought that 292 articles should be included. If I go to the back of the queue, you can see that many of the articles were not reviewed. We took those 292 articles and uploaded them into a new project, wherein we actually paid contract reviewers to do the extraction for us. The reviewers were paid $2 per abstract to extract a variety of Boolean, categorical, and string labels. One quick note, we created the outcomes string label because as the review was very general, we thought it unrealistic to think of every potential outcome before the fact. To the point, our reviewers ended up extracting 191 unique disease descriptions as shown in this blog post, Generating Insights. Using clustering methods, we were able to reduce those 191 unique descriptions into 13 categories. These 13 categories now can serve as a framework as our partner continues their review of Mangifarin. These two examples show how SysRev can be used for both ends of the literature review spectrum, from rigorous systematic reviews to more rapid narrative or guiding reviews. The rest of this video will focus on features that we developed for complex data curation. The first feature is called group labels, a kind of label of labels. If you think of document review from within a spreadsheet paradigm, then the purpose of the review is to create a row of data per document. However, data is often too complicated for a single row of data. For example, imagine you are interested in toxicity testing data for a given chemical how does one capture variation between doses and species? The salmonella responded at 10 micrograms, but the E. coli responded at 15 micrograms. You can either add new columns for each set of data, use delimiters such as commas, or try and reduce the data down to one row. But regardless of which method you attempt, you risk losing information. Group labels were built to allow for the extraction of tables of information from single documents allowing for the extraction of multiple relationships and complex data. In this example, we have an MSDS for toluene. Labs frequently have to keep a database of all the data from their MSDSs for all of the chemicals in their labs. The MSDSs, of course, are in PDFs, so this type of data extraction is actually fairly common. As I scroll down, let's say that I'm interested in the potential health effects. Halloween has five potential health effects, but you can imagine a different MSDS might have seven, or three, or twelve. Group labels allows the user to build extendable tables at will. This is the group label for health effects. As you can see, I was able to use a combination of categorical and string labels to capture all of the information. I also created a second group label for LD50, LC50 data that is found later on in the MSDS. Group labels can be combined as necessary to capture data from even the most complex of documents. 
The second feature is the ability to integrate and systematically parse complex data sources, such as JSON or XML documents. Oftentimes, these semi-structured documents combine semantic prose into a consistent hierarchy. One example of such is clinical trial data. This is a trial imported from clinicaltrials.gov in its JSON format. As you can see, there are a lot of different elements to this document. At any time, some may be important while others are irrelevant, but in this long format, the amount of information is simply too unwieldy to review. SysRev helps here by allowing reviewers to customize which fields are shown at any time. As you can see, while the information contained is unique, the structure of these trials is consistent from document to document. Brief summary, detailed description, lead sponsor, responsible party, eligibility module. Brief summary, detailed description, lead sponsor, collaborator, so a new field or more accurately a null field in the previous document, and then responsible party, eligibility module. Now let's say I didn't care about sponsorship but needed information found in the eligibility criteria. As I said, SysRev allows me to customize which fields are shown at any time simplifying the process for reviewers who are extracting data. And again, with the second trial, we can see that just the same fields are shown. Hopefully what I have shown you today is an overview of how SysRev is used for a wide range of document review and data extraction tasks. If you have a literature review or data curation project, feel free to reach out to us with any questions. Until next time.